Oh no, it's a bend, surely we must die. In this video, I've come to beautiful Australia to drive two marinas. So these aren't just marinas, these are Australian marinas um, with some subtle differences and some quite major differences in places. We'll start with a subtle. You can see they've both got this lovely grill, uh, painted black body owner. They would have been silver originally, which is perhaps a bit too in your face, but it looks so much more modern than the British grill design. I think it makes a massive difference to the look of the car. Uh, so this one here is a Marina Super. It's a coupe. They're both coupes and uh, produced in the um, Zetland factory in Sydney and built um, only for a couple of years, 73 uh, into 74, when it all went all a bit wrong for Leyland Australia. Uh, they are both um, of the coupe, but you'll note the coupe doors are the same as the four door saloon doors. So um, they look a little short, but um, not not an unpleasing design I don't think and here it was never a Morris Marina it was a Leyland Marina uh, they did start building them as Morris Marinas initially but soon adapted them more to local tastes with you know subtle changes like opening quarter lights but we didn't get in the UK and look at these enormous seats uh, far better than anything we saw in the UK the marina was an austere car in the uk but these are absolutely marvelous and the dashboard itself has quite a few changes as well a, a better layout i think overall uh, very very stylish but the big changes come under the bonnet so um, i think we'll start by looking there now to anyone who knows their marinas this will be a bit of a surprise this is the e-series engine used in the Austin Maxi and the Allegro and but here in Australia it found its way under the bonnet of the Marina and the reason for that is they had to try and meet fairly stringent um, emission regulations at the time and uh, the B-series engine didn't have um, that coverage the A-series engine did because they were selling Australian built mokes to America so they had some idea of how to do all that um, but rather than put the ancient B-series engine through such modifications, they went for the E-series engine instead. So this is the only use of the four-cylinder E-series engine in a longitudinal layout. Obviously the Maxi had the gearbox in sump, uh, as did the Allegro. Uh, there we go. Hot run tested and electronically tuned Leyland Australia. So it's an overhead cam, four-cylinder engine and uh, it uh, was I'm, I'm trying to work out who exactly developed this engine in the brochures Leyland Australia claimed that they developed the E-Series engine um, but um, I'm pretty sure the um, engineers back at Longbridge would claim they did it so it's an interesting point for debate I'm not going to decide either way it is certainly true that the E-Series engine began life in Australia in the uh, Morris Nomad and the Morris 1500 mere months before the maxi went on sale so it's and uh, obviously the engines were built in both countries as well uh, it was uh, an engine conceived from the outset to be available in four and six cylinder forms um, subtle hint uh, so in four cylinder form it was used in the uh, nomad the 1500 the marina and in the uk in the maxi and allegro in six cylinder form it was used in the leyland p76 the uh, Austin uh, 2200 and the Kimberley and Tasman models here and then later the Wedge Princess which was never sold in Australia um, but yeah we, we need to go and have a peek under that bonnet because that perhaps has an even bigger surprise yes this marina has the six cylinder version of the E-series engine uh, it was developed initially to be used in this layout in the Leyland P76 and then someone um, here in um, Australia said well wouldn't it be a good idea to cram it into a marina and give it a bit more poke because you got cars like the Ford Cortina Mark III was available here with a big six cylinder engine Holden Tirana six and even eight cylinder options 
so um, this car really needed a bit more grunt and this engine more than provided it it's a 2.6 litre version um, because it's effectively a 6 litre version of the 1750 uh, if we rush back over to this one this is the 1750 version it was also available as a 1500 uh, produces 89 brake horsepower here but uh, I mean this one's had a few mods so it's got twin carburetors of an Austin Kimberley so I reckon it's probably somewhere in the region of 110 horsepower uh, would have been around 100 on the single carb um, but yeah it's just astonishing and a fair amount of strengthening work uh, see little panels down there and there are changes underneath as well it's got some lovely fat rubber on it which makes me feel more confident but you'll see telescopic dampers as well as the lever arm dampers this one is further modified with an anti-roll bar but um, this car is lowered slightly but still that sump is quite close to the ground so you don't want to be driving over boulders in it that's for sure uh, but yeah this makes it very interesting and sadly these cars were only produced for well two years uh, by 1974 it was all over and uh, Leyland Australia was just in financial ruin as was Leyland itself there we go 2626 uh, so, and more geek points on marinas will we'll notice but we've still got the early windscreen wiper style uh, on, on these Australian marinas because they wouldn't put up with having a left-hand pattern on a right-hand drive car. In the UK they changed it. Uh, they claimed because of um, wiper lift at speed and if we return to this car we'll see the owner has fitted some spoilers to try and help with that but they're not the most highly sprung of wipers so that is an issue but I don't see why changing to a left-hand drive pattern would solve that. Uh, I think some people in the UK just preferred having a left-hand drive pattern because the wiper parked in front of the driver it took stuff away but yeah I'm, I'm probably labouring this point far too much but yeah Le Leyland Marinas here in Australia kept correct wipers albeit with quite an angle on. These ones are apparently off um, a truck and um, yeah I can feel that's got much more weight on the spring it's also got these gorgeous Trico wiper blades um, developed for cars apparently like the Lamborghini Miura and um, according to Tyrrell's garage anyway and um, they, they should combat lift too you would hope uh, I think we should have a peek at the interior of this car as well this one is not stock in the slightest so we've got a pair of um, chunky bucket seats for a start and the most amazing gear knob I have ever seen um, we've got this beautiful wood rim steering wheel complete with plug hole of despair and again we've got the modified dashboard uh, obviously we've got a kilometer speedometer it's this one's been round a good few times the owner has had it for 40 years which i find incredible uh, there's not much in the way of switch gear we've got um that looks like panel lights choke and uh, normal lights there we've got column stalks set for um, the australian preference of indicators right and uh, we've got two speed heater fan a modern stereo in this example some mystery switches and that one um, is for the fuel pump that one's for driving lights and that one is just there for mystery but it, you know even this is quite stylish and i think different from the uk models um, we've got the classic british leyland door handles which we used on absolutely everything um, and acres of black vinyl um, but if i pull this brochure out this is actually only for the four cylinders but let me introduce you to a new car that combines all the good little ideas of the Japanese with the toughness and space of Australian cars this brochure is fascinating and here they say that the four cylinder engine is the only four cylinder engine ever to be designed engineered and built in Australia uh, they're trying to be proud of a four cylinder engine when the market really demanded more but there we go 89 horsepower from the 175 engine or oh, 1750 cc and uh, yeah I think the fact they had the Japanese in mind is why this front panel here in the correct silver looks ever so slightly like a Toyota Corolla and look at that plush vinyl seating the two-door super interior so there's quite a lot of beefing up going on in these cars generally but this one's got a little more 
uh, and it needs it because it has the six cylinder engine. So a very, very busy fuel gauge, I imagine, and a rev counter as well. Um, but um, I think we should stop prevaricating really and go for a drive. Just to correct myself on power output, this is the 2.6 litre, not the 2.2, so it's churning out something more like 130 brake horsepower through those um, twin SU carburettors. That's a meaty amount of power for a lightweight car. Before we do enjoy the pleasure of going for a drive, look at these amazing wheels, they look fantastic. Check out the spoiler on the back as well. This, this is a built-in glass fibre by the owner and uh, because Tiranas came with such um, accessories, I just think it looks amazing. This kind of reminds me of modified cars of the 80s I used to see everywhere. Uh, so we've got lovely original Leyland sticker in the back, uh, Australian made. Rightly proud because frankly this is the best marina that has ever existed I think. Uh, certainly in um, factory form there's been a few people modified their marinas over the years but yeah fascinating cars. So we shall start in the four cylinder version uh, which I still find intriguing just because this is basically a maxi engine in a marina. Uh, sadly the speedometer is broken so we've got this GPS unit to um, show us what's going on. I mean so far it kind of sounds so normal but um, we'll just let the six cylinder come past because it's going to lead the way. That thing is just absolutely marvellous and I can't wait to get my hands on it. Much bigger steering wheel. This is the original steering wheel, apparently. Oh, it's got that classic transmission wind from a marina. So, so far it sounds pretty normal. But yeah, I refuse to um, go with the... Um, sad majority view that these um, cars are dreadful. Uh, I think these are um, great cars anyway. And the E-Series engine feels right at home here. A really simple car to drive it's not challenging in any way oh I'd far rather be in this car than that car and these seats are amazing this offers levels of comfort we could only dream of look at this proper little button uh, like a fancy old sofa and also pleasing because I've been in quite a few Australian developed cars Holden Jackaroo there um, that have vinyl seats and I don't understand why a car company in Australia would develop a car with vinyl seats. Oh no, it's a bend, surely we must die. Oh no, it actually goes around bends. So 89 brake horsepower in a car that weighs under a ton is um, enough really, I think. I have to do that window up or I'm going to get sunburn. It's okay because I can open my dash vent there for a bit of ventilation. Oh, second gear synchro mesh is not happy. I love these wiper spoilers, which apparently don't help all that much with a wiping performance, but we'll give them a try. There we go, and we should carry on. Yeah, that, that wiping performance is pretty um, dreadful. But double declutching helps on the gear change.
that's us up to the limit of 80 on this section and uh, it feels absolutely fine uh, the engine is um, a fair bit more refined I think than the B series engine uh, yet I think developed slightly more power uh, in single carb form uh, than the B series which is a 1.8 litre engine Uh, we should go this way. And this is what the Leyland Marina had to contend with here in um, Australia. It's big straight roads, so the fact that it's not handling like a sports car is really of no consequence whatsoever. I will say the wiper performance is a little disappointing we've got a big triangle of doom going on behind the mirror and uh, yeah they don't actually wipe all that much of the screen it sits very high up so in outright wiping terms this car is not so good but it's okay I still like it perhaps a little bit short of gearing it's getting a bit busy at 80 kilometers an hour it's getting on for three and a half thousand revs but Back down to 50 here. It feels much more impressive than the um, 1.3 Marinas I've driven. Uh, they were okay, but servo-less drum brakes meant the stopping power was not really superb. Uh, certainly nothing to write home about. Uh, I think we should turn around here because I think I've accidentally come the wrong way. Oh, bit of a delayed effect on the servo there and suddenly we really were stopping that sounds really pokey I like it This seems like a great idea, um, but rather than fit the E-Series engine, for whatever reason, British Leyland uh, developed the O-Series engines instead, uh, which had uh, similar capacities, I think. I think 1.7 was the larger engine. No, sorry, 1.7 was the smaller engine, and then 2 litre was the big one. I said the car transformed, but it actually feels tighter as well. Um, it actually feels better built. Uh, no trim rattles going on. There's a bit of wind noise because I've got the window open. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's all right. I'm just going to turn that off because I think I'm getting heat to the feet, and I don't want heat to the feet. Oh, this sounds lovely. It's got a good amount of torque. And even the smaller engine was over 70 brake horsepower. So, um, yeah, I, I'm liking this. But I think we need to experience some six-cylinder goodness. So let's go and find the other car. And folks, uh, very exciting. <laughs> that is not the noise you expect in a marina uh, right here we go the engine is already warm I've just gone straight from first to fourth and it it's happy with that jeepers this is um, quick I suppose it should be 130 horsepower in a car that weighs probably around a ton, maybe less. Oh well, let's see if we can do a gear change properly. It's not the best, it's a gearbox um, also used in the Leyland P76 and some Chrysler Valiants apparently, but the owner has fitted himself. Originally, these came with a free speed manual or a free speed automatic, both courtesy of Borg Warner. <laughs> oh wow, 
wow! This is the most incredible marina I have ever driven! What a noise! Now the steering uh, parking speeds, I'll just do that window up a bit because it's getting a bit noisy in here. Oh, it's still quite noisy, I can't avoid the noise. The steering is quite heavy at parking speeds because he's got a smaller steering wheel and wider um, tyres as well. But um, it feels lovely now we're underway. We're going over some very broken terrain here. And I think those telescopic shock absorbers are probably helping to um, keep it feeling very composed. I'm under no doubt that this is not the most refined car ever in terms of suspension it's not going to handle like a sports car it isn't an MGB um, in drag really um, it is a Morris Minor that's got a six cylinder engine crammed into it well Oh, that's a, astonishing. What a gorgeous noise. So he's got the twin carburettors, that's a modification. And uh, I think we've got a sports exhaust going on. But also those carburettors have got minimal filtering. So you get a lovely induction roar. That's just amazing. And these seats are very hard. Uh, but it's okay because the suspension isn't that bad actually. Uh, I'm going to go left here just so we've got a bend to deal with and so we haven't got a huge truck in front of us either it's a very agricultural gearbox but wow that's an astonishing amount of performance in a marina oh my days this is just incredible it feels amazing you have to remember it's not like its competition was particularly advanced or refined in Australia they just crammed huge engines into anything the Holden Tirana was effectively a HB Vauxhall Viva but they just kept on growing and growing shoving ever bigger engines in it the Mark III Cortina wasn't particularly advanced maybe a little more advanced in terms of rear suspension location but uh, my word it's not a very relaxing car the gearing is definitely um, a little on the short side we're doing four and a half thousand revs at an indicated hundred but it just makes it sound amazing. Who needs to change gear? To be fair, that was one reason they um, used a free speed gearbox. They said they didn't need any more gears in this car. And uh, perhaps they were right. Uh, wow. Oh, there's a water truck coming along there. Is he going to spray us? I hope not. Uh, but maybe just in case he doesn't spray us, um, I will conduct a wiper test. Uh, here we go. Yeah, there's just not enough movement on the wipers really. Massive triangle of doom going on here. You can see the bottom of it. it goes all the way up to there. And um, look at this huge chunk down here. But it just doesn't wipe at all. Uh, but it does a better wiping performance than the last one I drove. So that's something I guess well that must rank as one of my favorite test drives ever what an extraordinary machine that is I mean yes this one's had a few improvements but um, fundamentally that is a hilarious motor vehicle uh, let's remind you that the first marina I drove if you haven't seen that marina video yet go and check it out it had an engine half the size with just 50 brake horsepower uh, so this has got twice the engine and more than twice the power uh, quite extraordinary and definitely a case of don't knock it if you haven't tried it so um, yeah if you want to slag off marinas I suggest you actually try driving one before reaching your own conclusions 
but I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm reluctantly going to have to take this car back to its owner. Uh, thank you, Paul, for letting me drive both of your Marina Coupes. You are a legend for owning two vehicles in such amazing colours and lovely condition. And I shall say, I look forward to you seeing you, rather, in a future video. Farewell.